My Hometown, brought to you by Giuseppe Pizzeria. Bring home real pizzeria pizza taste. Bring home Giuseppe by Dr. Utker. So I just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Harrison Brown, and I am a transgendered female to male. I um, play in the NWHL, which is the National Women's Hockey League. I just got cleared that I can use my new name, Harrison, and I can go by uh, male pronouns, so everything will just be male. You're the first openly transgender professional athlete in American team sports. That is a pretty heavy handle. Are you comfortable being the first? Yeah, uh, if, that's, if that's the title that I'm given, then great. I had no idea I was becoming that at all when I decided to come up publicly. I was just really thinking about what I need to do to be the most authentic me, and that's kind of what came out of it. When did you know growing up that maybe you didn't feel 100% comfortable in your birth body? Yeah, um, I had really always been in a single-sex environment. I went to an all-girls school growing up, and I always played on female sports teams. So I didn't really know what it was or what it meant for boys and girls to be segregated. Mm -hmm. It was when I went to a co-ed school when I was 13 or 14. I was put in this box of female, and I was told what to wear. I was told to put on makeup. I was told that I should hang out with my girlfriends. And that's when I started to feel discomfort. I understand it must be extremely difficult to have a child that's transgender. Like, it's, it's tough. You, you have all these expectations for your kid. You have them growing up a certain way because of the sex they were born with. Um, and all that kind of just shatters. I know the family dynamic is not always so straightforward, and I, I know that personally, having a trans family member. How was it for you? Yeah, the support of my sister was amazing. Um, she was one of the first people that I told. I remember talking in the car and crying to her, telling her that I didn't feel comfortable in the body that I was in, and I felt different, not just because of my sexual orientation, but I felt in my soul that my gender identity was man. And she wanted to learn, and she really helped me come to grips with like family support, and she was there for me. I'd always identified as, as gay, so I don't think it was a big surprise for her when I told her, it was just kind of like, oh, okay, well, you've been living your life practically as a man, now you just want to put a title on it. Mm -hmm. And she was immediately supportive. When you decided to take the step to come out publicly, I assume, not knowing what that's like, that it's a giant step, right? Going from just your friends and family knowing to the world. Just sort of take me through that. Help me understand. When I made the decision to come out publicly, I was not thinking about the backlash, and I was not thinking about what other people would view me as. Mm -hmm. I was 23 at the time. I'd been socially transitioning for four or five years prior to that, um, so my, my friends and my family knew, and I was portraying myself as a man in society. Um, this was just the next step that I took to let the public know, because I wanted to change my name on a roster. That's all I wanted to do through that. The backlash, I'm sure, is intense. How do you work with that? Actually, the backlash for me personally is not that much. I've had a really pleasantly surprising experience. Now, I don't read any comments on any articles that I'm in publicly. It's just something directed to me. Somebody tweets at me or somebody writes on my YouTube channel. I've really only had a handful of negative comments, which has been really great. What is your take on, on people who are truly uninformed, misinformed? There's a couple ways to look at a certain comment. Right. Like there's some people that comment on my situation because I identify as a man and I'm still playing in a women's league. That's unfair. I have an unfair advantage over all these people. And I can see from the outside looking in without having any education on it right. that this person identifies as a man, they should not be in the league. But what they don't understand is that I'm not physically transitioned. Right. I have no advantage over anybody else that I'm playing with or playing against. I have the same body that they do. And if I explained that to somebody, they would change their mindset. And then there's the people that will not change. Right. There's the people that will always have hate. There's always people that will always spread negativity. And that's because they're projecting their insecurities onto you. Mm -hmm. And that's when I start to feel bad for those people, is that they are so misguided and they have to live their whole life like that. Like that, that's sad to me. I think that's a very enlightened point of view. 
All right, hey guys, it's Harrison here, and today we're gonna to be talking about why I came out of retirement. So when I did announce my retirement, I wholeheartedly was ready to give it up. I wholeheartedly thought that I was just gonna move on, transition and everything. But I decided to delay my transition another season, another year. So you did decide to delay your physical transition. So why? Why did you decide to stay another year playing hockey? I thought that I was ready to give it up. I did. And I had made all of my necessary steps. I booked top surgery. I would consulted with my doctor and everything. But, but there was something in the back of my mind as soon as I was about to make those steps, as soon as I was about to finalize things and disqualify myself from playing based on the policy, I wasn't ready. And past just the hockey, I felt that I had such an impact on the LGBTQ community this past year. And I felt that I only gave it a few months to really come into what it was. And if I could take this year to really get in the front lines, really meet people, get out there. I've been doing speeches, I've been going to volunteer at LGBTQ places, and I've been just meeting people. And that's the part that I really do enjoy, so I'm very happy with my decision to delay it a little bit longer, to keep playing the sport that I love, and to also help people. That moment when you scored your first goal as Harrison Brown, what did that feel like? I guess I'm feeling very emotional right now, even just thinking about it. And it just was, it was perfect. It was like everything that I'd fought for, everything that I went through just was fine in that moment. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's good. Ooh. What's the best thing about being Harrison Brown? Hmm. The best thing about being Harrison Brown is just, it's me being me. And I get to live every aspect of my life as Harrison. I don't just have to hide be behind my friends and my teammates and my family. I'm Harrison to everybody. And it's a freedom and it's a weight lifted off of me. And I'm really happy that I did it. And I'm very happy that people that I haven't even met can take what it means to be Harrison Brown and use it for them too. So it's just, it's just a very uplifting, freeing experience to be yourself. And what do you say to those who might be struggling with where they're at through a transition, not having the support that they need? What do you say to them? It takes time. Like you might be looking at me or you might be looking at somebody else that's been transitioning for a long time and be like, why aren't I like that person? It takes a lot of patience. I've been, I have, the first time I came out, I was 13 years old, but there was a lot of struggles and there was a lot of hard times that I went through. But any of the hard times that I did go through made me stronger and made me appreciate just exactly what it means to be Harrison now, 11 years, to feel this free was definitely worth the wait for me. And I just hope that people can be patient and know that as corny as it sounds, it does get better and don't give up. Thank you. Thanks, really, thanks so much. My Hometown, brought to you by Giuseppe Pizzeria. Bring home real pizzeria pizza taste. Bring home Giuseppe by Dr. Utker.